The Madurai Nayaks were Telugu rulers from around 1529 until 1736, of a region comprising most of modern-day Tamil Nadu, India, with Madurai as their capital. The Nayak reign was an era noted for its achievement in arts, cultural and administrative reforms, revitalization of temples previously ransacked by the Delhi sultans, and inauguration of a unique architectural style. The dynasty consisted of thirteen rulers, of whom nine were kings, two were queens, and two were joint kings. The most notable of these were the king, Tirumalai Nayak, and the queen, Rani Mangamal. Foreign trade was conducted mainly with the Dutch and the Portuguese, as the British and the French had not yet made inroads in the region. <laughs> Sultan dynasty at Madurai Early in the 14th century, a dispute arose over the succession to the Pandya throne. One claimant appealed for help to Emperor Allah ud Din of Delhi, who dispatched his general, Malik Kafir, in 1310. Malik Kafir marched south, ransacking kingdoms on the way and causing enormous changes to the political configuration of central and southern India. He marched into Madurai, sacking the town, paralyzing trade, suppressing public worship, and making civilian life miserable. The great Meenakshi temple with its 14 towers was pulled down, destroying the nearby streets and buildings, and leaving only the two shrines of Sundarasvara and Meenakshi intact. The events are controversial, as another account describes them. The Deccan was soon to feel the force of Islam, which was already the master of northern India. In the reign of the able Sultan of Delhi, Allah ud Din Khalji, 1296, 1315 AD, a series of brilliant raids, led by the eunuch general Malik Kafir, a converted Hindu, crushed the Deccan kingdoms, and for a time a sultanate was set up even in Madurai, in the extreme south. Malik Kafir returned to Delhi following these events. The Pandyas protested the invasion, which continued for a few years in spasmodic fashion. The weakness of the Pandya regime caused the neighboring Shara ruler to invade and defeat the Pandya ruler, and he crowned himself in 1313. This was followed by a Shara occupation. However, the Shara occupation was transitory. A Sultan dynasty was soon re established at Madurai, ruling Madurai, Trichinopoly, and even South Arcot, for the next 48 years, first as feudatories of the Delhi Sultanate and later as independent monarchies. In 1333, during the rule of Muhammad bin Tughlaq, Jalal ud Din Asan Khan declared independence from the Delhi Sultanate and ruled the area until he was killed by one of his officers in 1339. Alo Din Udawji Shah (1339–1340) took power in 1339, but soon met with the same fate. Qutb Ud Din Firas took over in 1340 and was killed in about 40 days. Giyas Adin Muhammad Damgan (1340–1344) ascended the throne in 1340 and later married a daughter of Ahasan Shah. Ibn Battuta visited Madura during his reign and he testifies to his atrocious behavior. He was defeated initially by the Hoysala Vira Balala, but later captured and killed Balala. He died in 1344. Nazir Ud Din Mahmud Damgan (1344–1356), Adl Shah (1356–1359), Faqr Ud Din Mubarak (1359–1368), and Allah Ud Din Sikandar (1368–1377) followed him in succession. When Sikandar was defeated by Bukka in 1377, the region became part of the Vijayanagara Empire. <inaudible> Vijayanagara domination, 1365 Sultan rule of the region was overthrown in 1377 by the new Hindu kingdom of Vijayanagara, which had been founded at Hampi. For the next two centuries, this empire withstood repeated sultan invasions from the north. Kampana Udayar, a Vijayanagara prince and an agent of Bukka Raya who also served as a general in the Vijayanagara army, marched into Madurai in 1372. He expelled the sultan out of Madurai and started a dynasty, subordinate to the court of Vijayanagara that lasted until 1404. The immediate effect of this victory was the reopening of the Shiva and Vishnu temples. The rule was continued by Vijayanagar appointed governors who had Nayaka as a title. King Krishna Devaraya (1509–1529), the greatest ruler of the Vijayanagara dynasty, exercised close control over this part of his empire. 
After ruling for some time, Kampana Udayar left his son Mbana Udayar in charge of Madurai, who was succeeded by his brother-in-law Porkasa Udayar. Around 1404, Porkasa Udayar was succeeded by a man named Lakhana Nayakan, thus bringing the dynastic rule of Kampana Udayar to an end. Lekina Nayakan appointed Veera Parakrama Pandyan to rule Madurai, who belonged to Pandyan dynasty. But soon after Veera Parakrama Pandyan revolted to become independent, he was dismissed and chased away to Shara country, and Lantana Nayaka jointly ruled Madurai with another Nayaka named Mathanan until 1451. Between 1451 and 1499, the Madurai regions were ruled by four persons brought by Lakhana Nayakan, whom he declared to be of true Pandya stock. The four persons were Sundara Tal Maha Vilavanathi Rayar, Kalayar Somanar, Anjatha Purumal, and Mudarasatirumalai Maha Vilavanathi Rayar. A commentator, James Nelson, mentions that all the four persons belonged to the same family, and were illegitimate sons of a petty Pandyan chieftain. However, all four of them enjoyed kingly powers for 48 years from 1451 to around 1499 and are said to have built four Gopurams of the Madurai temple, which was destroyed by the Mohammedans. After the ouster by the sultans, the Vilavanathas are said to have retired. The existing four Gopurams were built by the following East Gopuram was built by Pandya King Maravarman Sundara Pandyan in 1216. This is the oldest of all Gopurams. West Gopuram was built by Parakurama Pandyan between 1315-1347. This is the second Gopuram built without steps to bring goods inside. South Gopuram was built by Sevandi Northi Chettier of Srimalai in 1559. North Gopuram was built by Krishna Virupa Nayakar between 1564-1572, and left without completion hence it is still called Matai Gopuram meaning flat tower. The Nayak dynasty Prior to the formation of the Nayak dynasty, Madurai and its surrounding areas were ruled by Bana chieftains. When Kalotunga Chola III conquered Madurai in the 13th century, he installed a Bana as the ruler. The Banas or Vanars were feudal lords of both the Cholas and the Pandyas. Therefore, when Sundara Pandya was helped by a Bana chieftain in his campaign against Kulathunga Chola III in about 1216-1217, he too gave a part of the Chola country to a Bana as a reward. Subsequently, the Bana's ruling as the Nayaka under lords of the Vijayanagara Empire left inscriptions that provide us their names. An inscription of 1477 refers to a Tirumalarunj Kalai Mapala or Mahapala Vanan as the ruler of Madurai, and an epigraph dated 1483 in Pudukotai refers to one Bana chieftain named Virapratapa Sundaratoludeyan Mahabali Vanadaraya ruling in Kanjavaram in 1469. The Nayakas appointed to rule Madurai under the Vijayanagara Empire were Narasa Nayak Tena Nayak Narasa Pillai Kuru Kuru Timapa Nayak Katyama Kamaya Nayak Chinapa Nayaka Ayakarai Vyapa Nayak Visvanatha Nayak Iarmadurai Nayaks belonged to the Bailia social group. History After Vishwanatha Nayaka took over the country, it was held by his kin for two centuries, with a few short periods of break, until sultans took it in 1736 for a brief period, and finally the British took it during the 1780s. Origins <inaudible> 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 In 1538, the Vijayanagara commander Kotakam Nagama Nayaka defeated Virazakara Chola who occupied the Pandyan region. However, Nagama Nayaka declared independence from the Vijayanagara dynasty instead of handing back the kingdom. To check the rebellion of Nagama Nayaka, Emperor Krishnadeva Raya sent a large force under Viswanatha Nayak. Vishwanatha Nayaka was the son of Nagama Nayaka. Viswanatha eventually defeated and imprisoned his father. He was rewarded by the Vijayanagara king who made him the viceroy of the Tamil country. Krishnadeva Raya did not punish Nagama Nayak. The emperor gave him some religious work and allowed him to attend the royal court. Viswanatha Nayaka obeyed the orders of the Vijayanagara king nominally, and placed the Pandya on the throne who ruled for a while. 
However, Vishwanatha Nayaka later set out to rule on his own account, and in 1559 when the Vijayanagara kingdom was in decline, he established a dynastic rule. Nagama Nayaka According to historian V. Viridagirasan, Nagama Nayak, an officer under Krishnadeva Raya was the brother of Timapa Nayak. As noted above, Nagama Nayak was the father of Visvanatha Nayak founder of the Madurai Nayak dynastic line. Timapa Nayak was the father of Savapa Nayak who founded the Tanjore Nayak dynastic line. Hence Viswanatha Nayak and Savapa Nayak were cousins. Viswanatha Nayaka Viswanatha Nayaka was appointed as the Vijayanagara viceroy to Madurai in South India during the 16th century. According to the Kaifiyat of Karnata Kotakam kings, Vishwanatha Nayadu held the titles of Iyer and Nayaka. Viswanatha Nayak was formally crowned as the Madura king by Asayudadeva Maharaya. Following his appointment, Viswanatha is said to have set himself immediately to strengthening his capital and improving the administration of his dominions. He was supported by his able general Aryanatha Mudalir who led Viswantha Nayak's army and had become second in command taking power along with the latter. He demolished the Pandya rampart and ditch which at that time surrounded merely the walls of Madurai's great temple, and erected in their place an extensive double-walled fortress defended by 72 bastions, and he constructed channels from upper waters of the Vagai River to supply the kingdom with water. Perhaps the Paranai and Chittanai dams owe their origins to him. Vishwanatha Nayaka ruled from 1535 to 1544, and was succeeded by Virathapa Nayakar who ruled for a very short period of about a year. In 1545, Dumichi Nayakan became the governor, and after 20 months, he was succeeded by Vishwanatha Nayakan again, until Vitala Raja took over. Vitala Raja ruled from 1546 to 1558, hereafter Vishwanatha Nayak took over again from 1559 to 1563. After Vishwanatha Nayak, his son Kumara Krishnapa Nayaka took over and from there on, the heredity rule of Vishwanatha Nayaka continued. Topic. Introduction of the Polygar system In his administrative improvements Viswanatha was ably seconded by his Prime Minister Aryanatha Mudalir or, as he is still commonly called, Aryanatha, a man born into a poor Velala family in Mipadu village, Tandimandalam the present-day Kanchipuram district who had won his way by sheer ability to a high position in the Vijayanagara court. When the Vijayanagara Empire fell, he became the Dalavoy general and the second in command to the Vijayanagara Viceroy Viswanatha Nayaka of Madurai. Aryanatha Mudalir utilized the Palayam or Palagar system, which was widely used to govern the Nayak kingdom. The system was a quasi federal organization of the country, which was divided into multiple Palayams or small provinces, and each Palayam was ruled by a Palayakarar or a petty chief. Aryanatha organized the Pandyan kingdom into 72 palayams and ruled over the 72 dry zone Palagars chiefs for over 50 years. The feudal chiefs of southern Tamil Nadu continue to be specially attached to his memory to this very day. Each was placed in charge of one of the 72 bastions of the Madurai fortifications. They were responsible for the immediate control of their estates. They paid a fixed tribute to the Nayaka kings and maintained a quota of troops ready for immediate service. The Meenakshi Temple, destroyed by the Mohammedans was reconstructed in 1569. At the entrance of the Thousand Pillar Mandapam, we can still see the statue of Aryanatha Mudalir seated on a beautiful horse back which flanks one side of the entrance to the temple. The statue is still periodically crowned with garlands by modern worshippers. He lived until 1600 and had great influence upon the fate of the Nayaka dynasty until his death. Aryanatha Mudalir was not only the pre colonial military man but also enjoyed a cult status in southern Tamil Nadu and became a tutelary patron figure amongst some of the region's cattle keeping predator groups. These men did much for the country in those days, founding villages, building dams, constructing tanks, and erecting temples. Many of them bore the title of Nayakan, and hence the common Nayakanur as a termination to the place names in this district. They also brought with them the gods of the Deccan, and thus we find in Madurai many shrines to Ahabilam and other deities who rarely are worshipped in the Tamil country. 
Their successors, the present zamindars of the district, still look upon Aryanatha as a sort of patron saint. Visvanatha Nayaka added the fort of Trichinopoly to his possessions. The Vijayanagara viceroy who governed the Tanjore country had failed to police the pilgrim roads which ran through Trichinopoly, to the shrines at Srirangam and Ramasvaram, and devotees were afraid to visit those holy places. Visvanatha exchanged that town for his fort at Valam, in Tanjore. He then improved the fortifications and town of Trichinopoly, and the temple of Srirangam, and he cleared the banks of the Kaveri River of robbers. Visvanatha had difficulty with some of the local chieftains, who resisted his authority in Tinavali, but after vanquishing them he improved that town and district. Visvanatha died aged and honoured in 1563. He still is affectionately remembered as having been a great benefactor of his country. <laughs> Vitala Raja Nayaka In 1532 the king of Travancore overran a large part of the Pandya country and defied the authority of Vijayanagara. In response, Akuta Deva Raya, king of Vijayanagara from 1530 to 1542, organized a successful expedition into the extreme south of India. He exacted tribute from the king of Travancore, suppressed two troublesome chieftains and married the daughter of the Pandya king resulting in the Pandya country being held more firmly and directly by the representatives of the Vijayanagar Empire. The native chronicles continued to confuse the authority of these suzerains, their governors, and the Pandya rulers, treating each as though it was supreme. Vitala Raja, a prince of Vijayanagara who invaded Travancore for a second time in 1543, took over Madurai around 1546–1547 and ruled Madurai for twelve years, until 1557–1558. James Nelson mentions that this Vitala Raja was none other than Rama Raja of Vijayanagara. An inscription in an old Perumal temple at Madura states that certain things were done during the rule of Rama Raja Vitala Deva Maha Rayar. And based on the dates within the short period assigned, Nelson reasons that Vitala Raja was none other than Rama Raya, and that the name Vitala was assumed as an epithet by Rama Raya. Rama Raya ruled Madurai more or less directly until 1557-1558, after which the Madurai country was left in a state of chaos, anarchy and confusion. During this time, a Pandya contrived to get himself crowned as the king, but the Raja of Tanjore defeated the former who themselves were defeated by the Vijayanagara general who drove the Tanjore Raja away from Madurai, and made himself independent. After this eventful period, Vishwanatha Nayak took over the reins of Madurai again around 1559 and ruled until 1563. After the Nayak dynasty took over Madurai, it raised the Madurai country to a high level of administration and cultural life. Topic: Kumara Krishnapa Nayaka (1563–1573). This went the Nayak was succeeded by his son Krishnapa Nayak, who, along with his father's able minister Aryanatha, expanded the Madurai kingdom under the Nayaks and brought most of the ancient Pandyan territory under its rule. Kumara Krishnapa is remembered as having been a brave and politic ruler. A revolt occurred among the Polygars, during his reign, but its leader Thumbichi Naidu Dumichi Nayakin, was captured and the trouble was quenched. <laughs> Fall of the Vijayanagara Kingdom, 1565 In 1565 the Sultan rulers of the Deccan defeated Vijayanagara, the suzerain of the Nayaks, at the Battle of Talakota. Vijayanagara had to abandon their capital Vijayanagara and take re-establish at Penukanda in Anantapur, then at re-establish at Velour Fort and Chandragiri near Tirupati, which later granted land to the British East India Company to build a fort at the present-day Chennai. Finally they settled at Velour in North Arcot. Their governors at Madurai, Kalahasti, Jinji and Tanjore still paid them tribute and other marks of respect, but in later years, when their suzerainty became weak, the Nayaks ruled independently. Joint rulers Kumara Krishnapa Nayak was succeeded in 1573 by his two sons, who ruled jointly and uneventfully until 1595, when they in turn were succeeded by their two sons, one of whom ruled until 1602. 
Topic: Muttu Krishnapa Nayaka 1602-1609. These were followed by Muttu Krishnapa Nayak. He is credited with having given the Setapadis of Ramnad a considerable slice of territory in the Maravar country, on condition that they suppress crime and protect pilgrims journeying to Ramaswaram. These were the beginnings of Ramnad kingdom. <laughs> Muttu Varapa Nayaka Muttu Krishnapa Nayak was succeeded by his eldest son, Muttu Varapa. He began the construction of the Dindigul fort at Dindigul on the hill, along with the temple on it, which later was completed by Tirumalai Nayak. Muttu Varapa's rule was in general not noteworthy and he is said to have allowed his favorites to tyrannize the people unchecked. Muttu Varapa is said to have had several vassals under him indicating that he must have already obtained great power, and he is stated to have paid the Vijayanagara king at Chandragiri a tribute of 600,000 pagodas in 1616. <laughs> Civil war in Velour During Mutu Varapa's rule, a civil war involving succession to the throne was taking place in the Vijayanagara kingdom, now based in Velour and Chandragiri. Gabori Jaga Raya, brother of the previous ruler Venkata II's favorite queen Obiyama claimed her putative son as the king and murdered Sriranga II along with his family in the Velour prison. Jaga Raya was strongly challenged by Yashamendu, the chief of Kalahasti who claimed the throne for Rama Deva, the rightful heir whom he had smuggled out from the Velour prison. Jaga Raya sought help from the Jinji Nayak and Muttu Varapa to attack Yashamendu and Ramadeva. Yashamendu and Ramadeva sought support from Raghunatha Nayak of Tanjore, who still treated the Vijayanagar as his authority. The Battle of Tapur Jaga Raya assembled a large army near Tirakairapali, the capital of Muttu Varapa comprising the armies of Jinji, Shara, Madurai, and some Portuguese from the coast. Yahama led the forces of Vijayanagara and Kalahasti from Velour and was joined midway by Tanjore forces headed by Ragunatha. Yahama's army was further strengthened by nobles from Karnataka. Both the armies met at Tapur, an open field on the northern banks of River Kaveri, between Tirakairapali and Grand Anakut in late months of 1616. The huge assembly of forces on either side is estimated to be as many as a million soldiers according to Dr. Bharata's in Sewell's book and considered to be one of the biggest battles in southern India. <laughs> Result in the battle, Jaga Raya's troops could not withstand the aggression generated by the imperial forces. Yahama and Ragunatha, the generals of the imperial camp led their forces with great discipline. Jaga Raya was slain by Yahama, and his army broke the ranks and took flight. Yethiraja, the brother of Jaga Raya, had to run for his life. Muttu Varapa tried to escape, he was pursued by Yahama's general Rao Dhamma Nayani who captured him near Tirakairapali. The Nayak of Jinji in the encounter lost all his forts except Jinji Fort. And the putative son of Venkata II, who was the cause of all the trouble was captured. The victory was celebrated by the imperial armies headed by the Thanjavur Nayak and Yashamendu, who planted pillars of victory and crowned Rama Deva as Rama Deva Raya, the Vijayanagara king, in early months of 1617. Ramadeva was barely 15 years old when he ascended the throne. Topic: Tirumalai Nayaka (1623–1659). Meanwhile, in the Madurai country, Mutu Varapa, mentioned above, was succeeded by the great Tirumalai Nayak, the most powerful and best-known member of his dynasty, who ruled for 36 eventful years. Before Tirumalai Nayaka came to power, the court of Madurai was being held at Trichy for some 10 to 12 years. Tirumalai Nayaka would have continued to rule from Trichy but for a dream. Tirumalai was suffering from Katara which the royal physicians were unable to cure. While he was once marching towards Madurai, Tirumalai's sickness worsened and he halted near Dindigul. When he slept in his tent, God Sundareshwara and Goddess Meenakshi appeared to him in a dream, and mentioned that they would cure him if he would make Madurai his capital. 
As soon as he awoke from his dream just before dawn, Tirumalai called for the Brahmins and others in attendance, who advised him to obey the will of God. Tirumalai Nayaka then not only vowed to make Madurai his capital but also to expend five lakh pawns pounds in sacred works. Immediately thereafter, he felt the disease leave him. An overjoyed Tirumalai Nayaka thereafter determined to devote his life to the worship and service of the gods of Madura and supposedly adopted the Shaiva faith. Tirumalai Nayaka was assisted by his Dalave Ramapayan, who was also the Prime Minister and Commander-in-Chief of the Madurai Army. Ramapayan helped crush the rebellion of the Setupadas of Ramnad. The Setupathi and his Maravas withdrew to the island of Pamban and procured the assistance of Europeans. While at the verge of attaining victory of the Setupathi, Ramapayan suddenly fell sick and died. He was succeeded by his son-in-law Shiva Ramaya who proved himself well worthy of the post and captured a nephew of the Setupati, Tanaka Tevan. With the Setupathi himself imprisoned, the Maravas of Ramnad quietly submitted to the authority of Shiva Ramaya. From a historical document Ramapayan Amanai, we know that the Dalavoy Ramapayan, a Brahmin, had also proven his mettle in the war against Randala Khan and Sriranga III between 1639 and 1641. After a glorious rule of 36 years, Tirumalai Nayaka died in 1659 in his capital Madurai, between the ages of 60 and 70 years of age. Mutu Virapa Nayaka Tiryamala was succeeded by his son Mutu Virapa, whose first act was to shake off the hated Sultan yoke. He tried to induce the Nayak of Tanjore to join the enterprise. However, alarmed at the power aspirations of his neighbor, the Tanjore ruler disclaimed all connection with his neighbor's aspirations and made an attempt to conciliate with the Sultans. The Sultan invaders moved against Trichinopoly and Madurai, spreading havoc, while Mutu Alakadri remained inactive behind the walls of the fort. Fortunately for him, the enemy soon had to retire, for their devastations produced a local famine and pestilence from which they themselves suffered terribly. They made a half-hearted attempt on Trichinopoly and then permitted themselves to be bought off for a very moderate sum. Mutu Alakadri did not long survive their departure, but gave himself over to debauchery with an abandon which soon brought him to a dishonored grave. <laughs> Chokanatha Nayaka Mutu Alakadri Nayak was succeeded by his son Chokanatha, a promising boy of sixteen. Please see the separate article devoted to him at Chokanatha Nayak. Topic: <laughs> Rangakrishna Mutu Virapa Nayaka, 1682–1689. Rangakrishna Mutu Virapa Nayak, who succeeded Chokanatha, was a spirited boy of fifteen. He tried to revive the diminished fortunes of the kingdom. He made a name for himself by ignoring Aurangazeb with courage, but little enough of his territories remained to him to rule. The greater part of them was held by Mysore, some by the Maravans, some by the Marathas of Jinji, and some by the Marathas of Tanjore. At first, the country was subject to anarchy and pillage, foreign enemies occupied all the forts, and robber chiefs were masters of the rural areas and carried on their brigandage there with impunity. Matters slowly improved, with Mysore soon distracted by a war with the Marathas of Jinji, and both the Setupathis of Ramnad and the Marathas of Tanjore occupied by wars within their own countries. Emperor Aurangzeb in 1686-1687 conquered the kingdoms of Madura's old enemies, Golconda and Bijapur, and he was for many years engaged in an exhausting war with the Marathas. Moreover, the young Nayak of Madurai, though imbued with a boyish love of fun and adventure which endeared him to his countrymen, also had a stock of sound sense and ability which evoked the admiration of his ministers, and he took advantage of his improving prospects. Mutu Virapa recovered his capital in 1685, and he gradually reconquered large parts of the ancient kingdom of his forefathers and succeeded in restoring the power of the Nayaks of Madurai. Unfortunately he died of smallpox in 1689, at the early age of 22. His young widow Mutamal, the only woman, strange to say, whom he had married, was inconsolable at his loss and, though she was far advanced in pregnancy, insisted upon committing sati on his funeral pyre. 
His mother, Rani Mangamal, with great difficulty persuaded her to wait until her child was born, solemnly swearing that she could then have her way. When the child a son, arrived, she was put off with various excuses until, despairing of being allowed her wish, she put an end to her own life. Rani Mangamal Mangamal, the mother of the late Nayaka, acted for the next 15 years as queen regent on behalf of her grandson. She was the most popular of all the Nayakas. <laughs> Vijaya Ranga Chokanatha Nayaka Her grandson Vijaya Ranga Chokanatha Nayak, starting on a bad note, enjoyed a long but apparently dull reign of 26 years, paving way for the demise of the dynasty. He was vain and weak-minded, and unfit to govern either himself or others. His reign was distinguished by the ill-regulated and extraordinary munificence of his gifts to Brahmins and religious institutions. The injustice of his rule caused a serious riot in Madurai, the mutiny of his troops, and incessant disturbances. His only warfare was over the succession to the throne of Ramnad, in 1725. Of the two claimants, one was supported by Tanjore Marathas and the other by Madurai and the Tandaman of Pudukotai. The Tanjore troops won a decisive victory and placed their protégé on the throne. A year or two later the Tanjore king deposed this very protégé, and divided Ramnad into Ramnad and Sivaganga, which became independent Marava powers. Topic Queen Meenakshi, Chanda Sahib, and the end of the Nayakas 1731 Vijaya Ranga Chokanatha died in 1731, and was succeeded by his widow Meenakshi, who acted as queen regent on behalf of a young boy she had adopted as the heir of her dead husband. She had only ruled a year or two when an insurrection was raised against her by Vanguru Tiryamala, the father of her adopted son, who pretended to have claims of his own to the throne of Madurai. At this juncture representatives of the Mughals appeared on the scene and took an important part in the struggle. Since 1693, Madurai nominally had been the feudatory of the Emperor of Delhi, and since 1698 the Carnatic region north of the Kolrun River had been under direct Sultan rule. The local representative of the Mughal was the Nawab of Arkot, and an intermediate authority was held by the Nizam of Hyderabad, who was in theory both a subordinate of the Emperor, and the superior of the Nawab. How regularly the kings of Tanjore and Madura paid their tribute is not clear, but in 1734 about the time, in fact, that Meenakshi and Vanguru Tirumala were fighting for the crown, an expedition was sent by the then Nawab of Arkot to exact tribute and submission from the kingdoms of the south. The leaders of this expedition were the Nawab's son, Safdar Ali Khan, and his nephew and confidential advisor, the well-known Chanda Sahib. The invaders took Tanjore by storm and, leaving the stronghold of Trichinopoly untouched, swept across Madurai and Tinavali and into Travancore. On their return from this expedition they took part in the quarrel between Meenakshi and Vanguru Tiryamala. The latter approached Safdar Ali Khan with an offer of three million rupees if he would oust the queen in favor of himself. Unwilling to attack Trichinopoly, the Sultan Prince contented himself with solemnly declaring Vanguru Tirumala to be king and taking the bond for the three millions. He then marched away, leaving Chanda Sahib to enforce his award as best he could. The Queen, alarmed at the turn affairs now had taken, had little difficulty in persuading that facile politician to accept her bond for a crore of rupees 10 million and declare her duly entitled to the throne. Queen Meenakshi required him to swear on the Quran that he would adhere faithfully to his engagement, and he accordingly took an oath on a brick wrapped up in the splendid covering usually reserved for that holy book. He was admitted into the Trichinopoly fort and Vanguru Tirumala, apparently with the goodwill of the queen, who, strangely enough, does not seem to have wished him any harm, went off to Madurai, to rule over that country in Tirunelveli. Chanda Sahib accepted the crore of rupees and departed to Arcot. Two years later, in 1736 he returned, again was admitted into the fort, and proceeded to make himself master of the kingdom. Chanda Sahib eventually marched against Vanguru Tirumala, who still was ruling in the south, defeated him at Amaya Nayakanur and Dindigul, drove him to take refuge in Sivaganga, and occupied the southern provinces of the Madurai kingdom. Sultan domination under Chanda Sahib 1736 
1740. For a time, Chanda Sahib had his own way. His success was regarded with suspicion and even hostility by the Nawab of Arcot. But family loyalties prevented a rupture and Chanda Sahib was left undisturbed, while he strengthened the fortifications of Trichinopoly and appointed his two brothers as governors of the strongholds of Dindigul and Madurai. It was at this period that he subjugated the king of Tanjore, although he did not annex his territory, and he compelled them to cede Karakal, now in Puducherry, to the French. Chanda Sahib and the Maratha Interlude 1740—1743 For additional details see Vangaru Tirumala Unable to help themselves, the king of Tanjore and Vangaru Tirumala called for the assistance of the Marathas of Sitara. These people had their own grievance against the Nawabs of Arcot, with whom Chanda Sahib still was identified, because of long delayed payment of the Chauth, or one fourth of their revenues, which they had promised in return for the withdrawal of the Marathas from their country and the discontinuation of their incursions. They also were encouraged to attempt reprisals by the Nizam of Hyderabad, who, jealous of the increasing power of the Nawab and careless of the loyalty due to co religionists, gladly would have seen his dangerous subordinate brought to the ground. Early in 1740, therefore, the Marathas appeared in the south with a vast army, and defeated and killed the Nawab of Arcot in the pass of Damalcharuvu in North Arcot. Then they came to an understanding with his son, the Safdar Ali mentioned above, recognized him as Nawab, and retired for a time. Chanda Sahib had made a faint pretense of helping the Nawab to resist the Marathas, and he now came to offer his submission to Sardar Ali. The princes parted with apparent amity, but at the end of the same year the Marathas, at the secret invitation of Safdar Ali, suddenly reappeared and made straight for Trichinopoly. Their temporary withdrawal had been designed to put Chanda Sahib off his guard, and it succeeded in that Trichinopoly was very poorly provisioned. They surrounded the town closely, defeated and killed the two brothers of Chanda Sahib as they advanced to his help from their provinces of Madurai and Dindigul, and, after a siege of three months, compelled the surrender of Trichinopoly. They took Chanda Sahib captive at Satara and, disregarding the claims of Vangaru Tiryamala, appointed a Maratha, the well-known Marari Rao of Guti, as their governor of the conquered kingdom. <laughs> Nawab authority re-established, 1743 Marari Rao remained in power for two years and finally retired, in 1743, before the invading army of the Nizam re-established his weakened authority in the Carnatic and in 1744 appointed Anwar Adin as Nawab of Arcot. The Nizam ordered that Vangaru Tiryamala should be appointed king of Madurai, however the Arcot Nawab disregarded this order and Vangaru Tiryamala disappeared from the scene, poisoned, some say, by Anwar Adin. The British Later, in the scramble for the Carnatic throne between Chanda Sahib, who was supported by French, and the Arcot Nawabs, Chanda Sahib was defeated in the Carnatic War and was killed by their allies Tanjore Marathas. In 1751, the Madurai Kingdom smoothly passed into the British fold, when the Arcot Nawab ceded the former state to the later for the repayment of his huge loans from the British East India Company. Thus began the British rule in the Madurai and Tamil country, after many wars with Mysore Hyder Ali, Tipu Sultan, and various other polygars, including Poli Thavan, Virapandya Katabaman and the Marudu brothers. By the end of 18th century, the British comfortably had settled into the Madurai country, after subduing most of the rebellious polygars of the former Madurai state. Polygar wars. Until the 19th century, the British had to face stiff oppositions from several of the kingdom's governors called Palayakarars. There were two Polygar Wars fought between the British and some of the Polygars at the turn of 18th to 19th century, which is also one of the earliest Indian independence wars. <laughs> <laughs> Descendants of Vangaru Tirumalai As late as 1820, a descendant of Vangaru Tirumalai, bearing the same name, was in Madurai endeavouring to obtain pecuniary assistance from the government. 
He and his family lived in Velaikarichi, in the Sivaganga Zamandari, and their children were there until quite recently. It is said that they still kept up the old tradition of holding recitations, on the first day of Chitrai in each year, of a long account of their pedigree and of a description of the boundaries of the great kingdom of which their forebears had been rulers. <laughs> Nayakas of Kandy Some of the family members of Vanguru Tirumalai established the Nayak dynasty in Sri Lanka known as the Kandy Nayaks. They ruled till 1815 with Kandy as their capital and were also the last ruling dynasty of Sri Lanka. The kings of Kandy had from an early time sought and procured their wives from Madurai. The Kandy Nayaks received military support from the Nayaks of Madurai in fighting off the Portuguese. And in the 17th and 18th centuries, marital alliances between the Kandyan kings and Nayak princesses had become a matter of policy. Topic: <laughs> Capitals. The Nayaka rulers started with Madurai as their capital. In 1616, Mutu Varapa Nayak shifted the capital to Tiruchirappalli, but Tirumalai Nayak moved it back to Madurai in 1634. In 1665, Tirumalai Nayaka's grandson, Chokanatha Nayak, once again shifted the capital to Tiruchirappalli and built a palace inside the fort. Irrespective of the location of the capital, the region was known throughout the period as Madurai country, and all rulers held their coronation in Madurai, which served as their religious and cultural capital. <laughs> Nayak rule and Taruchi The significance of Nayak rule in checking invasion by northern rulers elevated Taruchi in the eyes of national history. Had it not been for the Nayak rule, the central part of Tamil Nadu, particularly what today has come to be known as Taruchi, Thanjavur, and Perumbalar districts, would not have gained its own historical identity and unique cultural development. The Taruchi range comprised five major palayams, Udayarpalayam, Ariyalar, Marungapuri, Thirayur and Kudalore. They constructed new mandapams at several temples, including the Srirangam Sri Ranganathaswami Temple, and the Rock Fort. The Vijayanagara dynasty was chiefly responsible for the present and permanent glory of Tamil Nadu, which was ransacked by the earlier Delhi Sultanate. But for the invasions by Kumara Kampana Udayar against the sultans of Madurai, the state's cultural civilization would have been doomed. Wasteland development and the setting up of water harvest structures formed part of the Nayak ruler's welfare programs. It was at Rani Mangamal Hall in Taruchi that one of the Nayak rulers, Vijayaranga Chokanatha Nayak, launched a stiff opposition to the Mughal emperor Aurangzeb. <laughs> Nayaka coins Most Nayaka coins were made of gold or copper. The design, figures, size, and weight of Nayak coins all were similar to those of Vijayanagara coins. Sadasava Nayaka issued some beautiful Nayaka coins. One gold coin shows Shiva and Parvati seated next to one another. Shiva holds the Trisula trident and the M. Riga antelope in his hands. Another gold coin of the same ruler features the mythical bird Gandabarunda. This coin is almost identical to the Gandabarunda coins minted by the Vijayanagara ruler Akiyotaraya. A rare copper coin of this ruler displays, on its obverse, the standing figure of Kartikya Muraga, with his favorite peacock behind him. The reverse depicts the Nandi sacred bull below the Shivalinga. The Madurai Nayaks issued many coins featuring fish, the emblem of the Pandyas, who ruled Madurai before the Vijayanagara and Nayak rulers. Some early Madurai Nayaka coins portray the figure of the king. The bull also is seen frequently on the Madurai Nayak coins. Chokanatha Nayak, one of the last rulers of the dynasty, issued coins displaying various animals, such as the bear, elephant and lion. He also issued coins featuring Hanuman and Garuda. The inscriptions on the Nayak coins are in Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, and Nagari scripts. Unlike the coins of many of the earlier dynasties, the Nayak coins are easily available for coin collectors. Meenakshi Temple is constructed by Pandyan Kingdom. The Madurai and Tanjavur Nayaks made great contributions to architectural style, the main characteristics of the style during this period being the elaborate mandapas of the hundred-pillared and thousand-pillared 
Types: the high gopurams with stucco statues on the surface and the long corridors. The main temples representing this style are the Ranganatha Temple at Srirangam, noted for its increase in the number of enclosures. The Temple at Ramaswaram, noted for its long corridors. The Subramanya Temple at the Brahadasvara Temple Court at Tanjavur, noted for its fine vimana with Ratha and Maha Mandapas. Meenakshi Temple at Madurai, noted for the great splendor its thousand-pillared Mandapam, and the Thanga Thamarai Kulam Golden Lotus Water Pool. See also Tirumalai Nayakar Mahal Thanjavur Nayak Kingdom Nayaks of Jinji